Let me tell you something. 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 Wait. Wait. Hello, my name is Adam Vokter and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as the spineless spino, the Zucumimus. Now any future update may change the way you play this creature, so take everything as I say as temporarily. In this video we'll be going over the following topics. Stay to the end to find out how you can suggest your specific creature. Starting off with Arsenal. For head abilities we have the standard bite. Nothing special to add to it, except since you are a mid tier, it does pack a bit of a punch. For sensibilities, we have three options, the first one being drenched blows. The Tsukumimus got big forearms, and rather long fingers with some extra spice on the tip. Use them for something good and make sure that your targets are nice and wet before finishing them off. Heh! <laughs> Nictating membrane, just in case if you want to get extra spicy and take it to the water. From personal experience, I'd say it's actually better to not be able to see it during. It's not a pretty sight. I'm talking about the fight of course. Lone Hunter are basically the game saying that it's much more fulfilling to fight your opponent 101 instead of ganging and banging your enemies. I am still referring to a battle context. For front lane you have three choices. The first one is a powerful bitch slap attack that does fixed damage. The second ability is another bitch slap attack but this one can combo. For each bitch slap, more emotional damage get added and it can get stacked up to 5 times. The third option is the boring one, but let's just say it works swimmingly. For height you have 3 options, the first one are amphibious scales, that keeps you nice and wet until second round. Streamliner are just a dinosaur version of a wetsuit, and slick scales are basically the bee suit version. It only helps so much, you're not completely immune to mosquito bites. Looking at you, Rampharignus. There are two choices for leg abilities. The first one is either to swim like a toddler, or the second one, stomp your feet like one. You have two options for tail ability. The first one is to either talk your drift in the water, and the second one is to have the tail for an SMM play. This is the arsenal I recommend for you to use on your daily basis, or at least the arsenal I recommend if you're going to fight on land. There's a reason why I chose Streamliner over Slick Scales, and I'll come back to that when I talk about terrain. If you wonder, here's the arsenal I recommend for water fights. When it comes to subspecies, I actually found that water speed and land speed are the best subspecies, or at least it complements the situation for the Tsukumimus. You will understand better when I talk about the Tsukumimus fighting style, but for now, stamina recovery doesn't really do that well, even if you choose the stamina regeneration subspecies. The default stamina recovery are kinda bad, and even with the extra buff, it doesn't really buff that much. The Tsukumimus is a semi-aquatic, so if you want to perform the best during fight, you should have a water source nearby. This is also why I say that slick scales aren't really that necessary. If there are something that tries to pounce you, you can just go in water. The fighting self for Tsukumimus depends on the opponent. If you are facing somebody who has superior stats than you, then a hit and run strategy are best suited. Having the extra speed from the land build suit though, can help to assist such strategies. You have the maneuverability to be in your enemy's blind spot and also the speed to go out if there are any danger. If you are facing an opponent with inferior stats, then you do have the speed to keep up with them, or at least to keep pressure on. Taking a defensive stand and letting them run into your attack is the best course of action. Lower tiers are usually faster than you, and unless you are in a cramped area where it's easier to apply pressure, trying to chase usually results in waste of stamina on your part. If you see an opening to deal damage, then take it. While you take a defensive position, let them run around and waste their stamina, and when they are low on stamina, that is when it's easier to deal with them. In the case if you do get pounce, check if your opponent are in a position where they are vulnerable for counter attacks. Try to get them in a position where they are vulnerable for your stomp attack. For pouncer, that is usually the moment when they jump off. But it works wonder on other smaller creatures as well. You could also just do go to the deeper parts of the river strategy. Like I said, if you do have difficulties getting your raptor off you, then just run towards the body of water. 
Unless they can swim themselves, most creatures won't even bother going for you if you're close to a body of water. Mid-tiers are another story, due to the fact that their stats are closer to yours. The stats on Sukumimus are pretty much all rounder. Your stats are pretty decent for both speed and brawling, but when you're facing somebody of similar stats, it usually becomes a combination of head-to-head -head clashing and battle of turn radius. Basically, bite and tear as much as you can, but don't just stand there and be a target. Like I said in previous videos, water fights are just a whole nother ordeal. Because there's so much happening at once, and you have omnidirectional movement, water fights usually ends up becoming head-to-head -head fighting. And as we all know, head-to-head -head brawling usually favors the one with better stats. In other words, think twice before attacking something like a Spinosaurus or a Dinosuchus. Unless you're able to persistently keep yourself on their tail, it is usually smarter to just back off. Short answered, staying behind your enemy are key to winning any water fights. Water fights are more challenging to perform. So if you're a new player, I do not recommend this. However, if you're up for the challenge, then by all means. Again, in water, it is difficult to defeat those creatures that has a large amount of HP. In other words, trying to defeat Apexes in water can be rather difficult. On land, however, it is a different story. On land, you are faster than most Apexes, and this advantage in speed will be key to defeating them. Unlike with the mid-tiers, against Apexes, you cannot win over them in a head-to-head -head clash. You have to rely on hit and run and tail riding. What separates fighting Apexes from water and land is that in water you have omnidirectional movement. On land, you do not. Fighting will only happen on the X-axis. This can make tail riding way more easier than compared to in water. And don't be afraid even if you do take damage. If you tail ride properly, most of the damage you will take will be fixed on your tail. You are hitting your opponent directly on their body, meaning that they are taking more damage than you. The only thing you really need to worry about is if your enemy has a stomp ability. Lucky for us, stomp can be avoided. Sukumimus can solo Apexes, you just need the right conditions. So to summarize, against low tiers, be defensive and wait for the right moment. Against mid tiers, face them in a head-to-head -head clash, but make it also a battle of turn radius. You have similar stats, so it usually boils down to who can stay on whose ass for the longest and also not receive too much punishment. In water fights and against apexes, it is good to do hits and run, and of course the good old tail riding. If you have any specific issue you want me to cover, go to my community post, find the most recent post regarding the matter, and all the information should stay under there. With that, I bid you guys adieu and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.